Folks, we've got the 4075R out today. Kenton's in the driver's seat. I don't think he's ever gonna let me get in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're trying it out with the TS-10. I'm doing a little mowing here today. I've said before, I wanted to keep this mowed a little bit better this year. We're gonna do that. Let's get started. What do you think of it, Kenton? Hey, it's, uh, it's nice. Like I say, our limiting factor is how rough it is. I don't seem to be pulling the tractor down any. I think you'll see an area up there in front of you uh, when we get around in front of that building where the fescue is thick enough to... To put it to the test? To put it to the test a little bit. Right in there. Ah. Still plenty of tractor for it, but you just slowed down a little bit when I on through. Yep, yep. I see your rock here. Gotta get the angle of attack figured out here. Yeah, it uh, with those wheels being way back there, it takes a little practice to figure out how to turn it. Yep, just a little bit different than it used to. Well, and also on the other the other side of the coin is we're mowing it really nice and close. And it, I just can't get over what nice job it does. I do notice that uh, the PTO switch on here is a rocker switch. Yeah. And when I went to turn it on, you actually push it and then detent a little bit to start it. And it doesn't, you know, just jerk in like my, mine does when you pull the button. I think that's called a soft start PTO. That sounds good to me. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> And I think it's easier on equipment, too. Probably especially for some people that don't know how to start it at an idle. At some points through this video, you'll hear some audio quality changes. Turns out that sometimes we were out of range for our standard wireless audio system. And in those cases, you're hearing our backup audio. That's the audio directly through the Steel Advanced Procom headsets that we're all wearing here. I cut across here to find these guy wires and see if we can kind of get trimmed around the base. Kitten, what speed are you going? <laughs> Oh, you know what? The PTO is on. So. Yeah, there's a if you'll if oh. you'll switch the uh, monitor up there, you can switch it from PTO to speed. Oh, I didn't see that. Who's that? Oh, right now I'm just trying to stay in the seat. Yeah, two point oh oh. This is not this is not a good test right here. You may have too much air in the seat. No, oh, I. Uh, I need more cheeseburgers. Yep. <laughs> we'll work on that as soon as we get done here. Oh. Well, Some ruts out there are really, really bad. They are. I'm. I, I, good thing we got weight in the tires. I haven't tipped it over. <laughs> I don't think they're that bad. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. You get into some of that. That fescue, you can tell that it, it knows it's back there then. This mower will cut pretty good, but it cuts a little better if you actually uh, mow, mow all of it. Yeah, you know, I noticed that. It's funny how those blades only go out so far. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, you know what it was. We took lunch and then you have to retrain it. Yeah. Looks to me like you're doing pretty good on the whip. I w I'm pretty impressed, actually. Well, I, I, I really like the way this cuts. It can make somebody that doesn't know what they're doing look like they know what they're doing. And then somebody that's good at it, like you, make them really good. <laughs> oh, flattery will get you get, uh, go another round or two. Uh, <laughs> I think another round or two and you'll have it done. 
Uh, well, I, I could be getting close. Uh, the guy wires are something to keep an eye on, though. I get Christy out with the bin truck. Yeah. <laughs> you clean up the little areas I missed here under the guy wires. Really though, you have pretty good visibility to the mower. It's 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 pretty easy to trim with. Yeah. Okay. Good here. Once you get her straightened up, we'll just give her a back hold. right in there and get that. The back wheels are just back there further than what you expect them to be. Yeah. And so it makes it not react as quickly quite as a well as, as you would expect. Yes. I used to, used to using my bush hog, three point inch bush hog. One more try and you'll get it. Gotta keep an eye out where those guy wires are. That's probably good enough. Don't work with danger anymore than we have to. So we're running it in A range. That's, and that's plenty I, fast. I think that's plenty fast. About three and a half four mile an hour through here, and that's as fast as you really want to go. So that's one thing I noticed between this tractor and the 5075E. I think with the shorter wheelbase, this tractor rides a good bit rougher. Oh, yes, yes. That, that would make sense. I noticed that even, you know, just, you know, when you're roading them down the roads, why they bounce around a little It really is kind of surprising how fast you're getting done. I mean, I think you're able to drive a good bit faster than I can on the 3046 on. I wouldn't be a bit surprised because this this is, you know, bigger tractor. It's still tossing you around a good bit. No, I got to try to, as I go through those, I'm trying to see how much it pulls down the engine because they, you know, you know, the headphones work really well to keep the noise out, so I have to watch the tack and see how much it's really straining the tractor so they can't, you know, hear it as well. Suffice it to say, it's not having any trouble. Well, it is amazing what a nice job it's I noticed that on the videos, and where we, <laughs> you know, when you see a person is even better. Yeah, it really puts a, a single spindle mower to shame. Yes, it does, and that's what I'm used to using. And it's a nice, nice job. Now, someone asked about road speed. I saw looked like a max of about 22 miles per hour. That was based on the gauge and the tractor gear. I did not try to use any sort of uh, phone-based gauge to, to determine what the actual speed was. I was talking about the gauges with Kenton. Um, here is the switching between PTO, air PTO, air PTO, ground speed. There we go. Yeah, I'm eventually going to get the rock out, but at least I sprayed around it a little bit last fall, so I don't have to, to look for it and surprise. The ride is quite rough. It's something I'd like to work on at some point. I'm not sure when or how I'll do it. I, I hate to tear out the sod, but on the other hand, it's not like it's uh, you know some spectacular grass. It probably wouldn't hurt it if I was to come back here tear it up, see if I can get it smoothed out a little bit. And then the, some of it is recent. There was an inspection here around the tower last fall, and they left it really rough. So we've got to work on that. Now, I don't need the headset in this cab. 
uh, there would be no need for it at all. The reason I have it on is to be able to talk to the rest of the team. I'm finding the maximum speed and the low range to be 4.5 miles per hour. Again, that's going by the display here. Don't know if you can see it or not. But uh, yeah, I'm bouncing around like crazy. So that this camera image is showing you how it feels, except I am in the air seat. Yeah, so the air seat does help that a little bit. That's about what I think is my it continue. That's, that's what it was. This tractor just doesn't pull down very much. I've got one little adjustment issue. It says the parking brake is on, but it's not really. It's, it just bounces up a little bit. And so I have to put the parking brake back down or push it. It's just coming up one notch. It's not really on, but the light comes on. So that's something that could easily be adjusted. I just didn't notice until I was here today. It is the roughest right in here. Oh my goodness, this is only going to take a few minutes at this speed. Yeah. Yeah. This is much faster than I can mow with the 5075E because uh, with the 5E, I have to be going slower for obstacles, right? And like I'm here at an obstacle now, and I could slow down with the hydrostatic transmission. But with the 5E, I would just run in a lower gear to avoid being going too fast for these kind of obstacles. I hope that makes sense to the viewers. You just kind of choose a good average speed, and when you're in really easy mowing, you're going a little bit slower than you would like, but then when you're around the obstacles, you're going a speed that is manageable. Whereas with a hydrostat, you can do that all just really quick. It makes it so much handier and much more efficient, as what, like you said, because, and easier on the operator because you can adjust to whatever the conditions are immediately without having to worry about changing gears or whatever. Yep. I, I just illustrated that. I kind of ran too close to this uh, guy wire and again, I just let off the pedal and I stopped. There's really no stress, no uh, no panic at all. No. With a gear drive tractor, you push on the clutch and a lot of times try to hit the brakes at the same time to make sure you get stopped. Yeah, it's just it's just more panic. It's just something more to be nervous about. So, hydrostatic drive and mowing go together like chocolate and peanut butter. Oh, absolutely. Like Tim and Christy. There you go. Ooh. Christy, I genuinely think you would enjoy mowing up this rig. It looks like I might. I, I, I think uh, it's comfortable enough. And, and again, if you if you lose control a little bit or get a little nervous, you just let off the pedal, just like mowing your yard, right? So it, it really is similar. The only difference is being a full pipe mower, that it doesn't follow you directly behind. And, uh, sometimes that's an advantage, actually. It makes it easier to train. I mean, we're going to be done with this section and really what seems like no time at all. I'm not going to be finished having fun yet. And we're going to be done mowing. Now, I'm not being super scientific here, but uh, I'm seeing about 81 dB on my watch here uh, inside this cab with the BTO running mower running full force. It's got a big pile of dirt around it. I don't want to mow it over. It's a dirt leveler, too. Yeah, there you go. It's a <laughs> landscaping tool. And there's more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not supposed to be a landscaping tool. And we wonder why my blades are always dull. Hey, what? It doesn't seem to hurt the cut quality from the way this looks. Yeah, you looked at them and you noticed the blades were dull as could be, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah, I did. I, I, it, that's another marvel of that thing. It just does a nice job. 
when I get this finished, uh, Kenton and I will get together and we'll, we'll kind of describe the differences that we've experienced between this machine and his 4052R. And I will discuss the differences between this machine and the 5075E as I've mowed with this very same mower and that tractor on this very same property. So, yeah, we'll, as soon as I get this done, we'll, we'll share that information. Stick around. It's just a beautiful day for mowing the tower problem. <laughs> That does, that does turn really tight, actually. Yeah, I'm going to turn with we're tight towards you, so you're probably not going to be happy about that. Do a little more landscaping on the way. I ought to be able to get that other strip of grass here. Right next to the sky. So you've had a chance to mow with the 4075R and TS-10. Yes. First thoughts? I've said it before, the, the, the cut quality of this TS-10 is just so much better. And I'm used to, as, as you mentioned, running a, a single spindle deer bush hog type chopper. And yeah. You always got tracks and it, it just never looks even though I'm not grooming the woods, but I like to keep it. Okay, and with this one, you're saying we're, we're cutting lower out here than you typically probably, cut? Probably, yeah, probably a little bit lower, but that that is yet another testimony to the mower that it does that, and it would probably mow as fast as we can mow if we could stay in the seat. Yeah, I really need to do something to get this field level up, there's no so, question. How about compared to your 4052R and single spindle mower, what do you think about the tractor? Anything? Did you notice any differences? There's, there's definitely more power. And in the in the video when we were over in that that tall fescue, and if, if I get into that with mine, even it's a six-foot cutter, and... Uh, you would know it. Uh, you you would know it. And you'd, you'd you just have to slow down. And again, a testimony to what you said earlier with the hydrostat. It's just so much yeah. more efficient, effective, and easier to mow when you have the hydrostat. So yeah. But, so it feels a lot like your tractor. Oh yeah. Just a lot more horsepower. You can tell. Power. You can tell it's got more horsepower. Probably, even when I was into that, it probably wasn't as bad as I thought because I had to hear the earphones on and I couldn't really used to hearing the engine yeah but but it yeah these cabs are quiet so from my perspective I'm I've mowed this a few times with the 5075e supposed to be the same engine horsepower I think it has a little more PTO horsepower right uh, uh, about 65 I believe at least mine has about 65 we tested on the dyno I can't remember if it's rated at 65 or if it's rated at 60 as well Oh. on the PTO, but uh, we'll put that information right here. My experience is that this machine doesn't ride nearly as nicely as the 5075E. <laughs> you got a point there. Now, I thought of a couple things. I did not do anything with air pressure, and there is a white pin mark on the side, on the other side, that says 28 PSI. If they've got 28 PSI in these tires, no wonder it yeah. rides a little rough. Um, yeah. I like to run my rear tires just kind of as low as I can, uh, and I don't want them to spin on the rim, and, and with a biased tire, I don't want them bulging very much, but uh, I really want to run them as low as I can to keep a little bit of uh, 
a, a little bit of cushion there in the ride. Yeah, I heard you mention it, that, that short wheelbase. It I makes mean, a big difference. It does, it does. But I think that's more than offset by the hydrostatic transmission oh, versus the absolutely. gear drive transmission. I, uh, with the 5e, you don't even have a two-speed shift on the go or any sort of a, a change uh, in speed, right? So you choose your speed, and you're going to mow in that speed, and and the only thing you've got is your throttle to change the speed, and of course that reduces your mower. This one is not equipped, and unless I couldn't find the switch, it's not equipped with EPTO. Uh, so unfortunately, we were unable to try EPTO. I think it, with this TS10, that would have worked beautifully. Oh, yeah. Because we had plenty of power, and we would have slowed that engine throttle down, saved some fuel. Yep. It, it, would, it wouldn't have felt like the tractor screaming, and uh, I think that would be a feature that I would want to buy. That, it would, especially as you mentioned in this case, where you got enough horsepower to be able to do that. Why not? If you have any questions about those comparisons for either Kenton or I, both of us will be watching the comments. And if we get the same question repeatedly, we'll put it in the pinned comment. So make sure to check out the pinned comment. Uh, likewise, with any video that we make, if we make any mistakes, at least that we can figure out that we've made a mistake, we will uh, put that in the pinned comment. Um, we'll have some more videos in this series. I, I thought the PTO horsepower and the mowing test was going to be something that people would really want to see. Yes. Uh, I really like this uh, tractor for this for this uh, application. I do too. With that extra horsepower in, in, in a hydrostatic version is, man, that's a nice combination. But we're not done yet. We've got to do a couple of other things at least with the 4075R. So far, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to give it a thumbs up. Uh, you and me both. Thanks for watching, everybody, and thank you, Kenton, for giving your expertise on this. It's oh. always fun. Give us <laughs> well, one more laugh. Well, well <laughs> you didn't have to remind him to tell us about all the mistakes I made. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be easy enough to find those. So, Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with, with Tim. Tim. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing.